Okay, we're back at theCUBE for a final wrap up for day one at EMC World uh, 2012. This is SiliconAngle.tv's extensive wall-to-wall -wall coverage of EMC World 2012. Uh, it's been a great day. I'm here with my co-host, Dave Vellante. Dave, uh, great day. And Stu Miniman from Wikibon is going to help us wrap up the day. Um, Stu's been out on the floor uh, scouring for, for stories, doing uh, a lot of one-on-ones uh, -on -ones with a lot of customers and uh, attendees. Have you been to Area 51 yet? Or? Did you get that, that secret, we're not allowed to talk about it yet, I'm told. <laughs> but I, I think we're going to talking about it on, on the screens here. Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, <laughs> they, they are keeping that kind of under wraps, even though, Dave, I hear you've gotten a little insight on it. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's a secret and what's not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, let's wrap up uh, day one here. Okay, we've got a huge day tomorrow, starting off with the CEO of Violent Memory Systems. Uh, Don Basile's coming on. We yeah, got looking forward Chuck to that. Chuck Hollis. Um, and you'll be at HBase Conference. I mean, that's going to be I'm going to be in San Francisco for the HBase Conference, hbasecon.com. Um, but great day today. We were on stage at warming up at Joe Tucci. It was yeah, exciting. that was terrific. Uh, I, I really enjoyed doing that, John. I think that you know, hey, we brought the greatness of theCUBE to the main stage at, at EMC World. We collaborated with EMC TV. I was very happy about that. You know, it's a lot of great feedback from the EMC TV crew because they're just really up there professionals in their photography, their uh, documentaries, and they see the independent analysis in that, you know, I think we're at a historic point where the collaboration between an independent media company like, like SiliconANGLE Wikibon and EMC where authentically the content is being shared and that knowledge and that experience is really resonating. So I'm excited to work with EMC TV and it was great to be up there and to see Pat Gelsinger and Joe Tucci deliver some great keynotes. Uh, again, we've had a great day of guests here. The theme here is, is all about agility of IT and big data. Big data, not so much you know, proof points yet. I think tomorrow will be a different, oh, different yeah. conversation, but yeah, yeah. today it was all about cloud, cloud IT for agile within the private hybrid cloud environment for you know, IT enterprises and the service providers getting that real cloud solution around hybrid. So, you know, that was key. The other thing that I walked away with today, Dave, was the fact that the, uh, the, the data protection is really a massive area that is going to categorically, I think, explode. And I think it's been kind of on a neutral set, um, a, a, a set level, the phone's going off, hold on. Yeah, I think you're right about that, John. I mean, I think data protection is a very fundamental, we see it on the Wikibon surveys, as one of the top three issues that people are dealing with. Backup's always been a big pain point for IT practitioners, and that's now evolving into data protection around security and cloud well, and big data. The thing about data protection right now is that my point that I've, my observation is the big investment that EMC made in, in data domain and Avamar, mainly data domain, because it was a huge brawl with NetApp to win that billion dollar, two billion dollars, two billion dollars. 2.5. 2.5 yeah. billion dollars. It's going to pay off for them now because as the market moves to this virtualized infrastructure, backup is a little bit, is very complex, but the demand is high because of, with cloud, which is basically, as we heard from Secret CTO, an outsourced model. So again, that's a, that was a big point. I want, to make a, I want to make a follow up point on that. Is um, I had said to BJ Jenkins that I thought it was a defensive move. Um, after the acquisition, somebody at EMC told me, you know what? This was all about, not just defensive, that's true, but it was about growth. I said, and that's kind of interesting, but now we've seen that take shape, haven't we? Uh, that where data domain has kicked in, they've rationalized the whole Avamar versus do data domain thing, and it's growing like crazy, it's one of the fastest growing parts of their I business. Think, I think to me, this the go to market on that, this new product line is the fact that they have flexibility. EMC's reputation in, in data backup and data protection, backup and recovery, whatever you want to call it, data protection now is the, is the classification of that sector, is that ultimately they are a market leader, 66% market share in a huge market, but the fact is that flexibility for customer choice is critical. And you know, you, it's hard to say that, hard to be a data backup vendor, Dave, and say I'm going to offer them flexibility and choice. Now the other thing too I, I think I took away today is, is Flash, right? They've just bought Extreme IO. They, the EMC was first with enterprise flash drives. They, they announced, Pat Gelsinger on theCUBE last year said we fell a little bit behind, we're going to do something about that. They announced uh, VF Cache, they announced Thunder, they go to market strong, then they buy Extreme IO. Um, I still think there's some confusion as to what the, the strategy is. I mean, I think they've got individual efforts that are good, uh, but I think there still needs to be more work to come together. Now, having said that, I think they're ahead of the other big whales. I think there's still some innovation going on 
in the ecosystem and with startups. Well, we've heard from customers directly. We had Secret CTO on here, uh, which is another great segment we'll talk about in a minute, but at Sapphire and other, other shows we've done the Cube, we've heard from customers directly where they're putting Flash in front of as a SAN solution. So I think EMC will do quick deployments of Flash to kind of stopgap that either loss of sales and or customer re-architecture, but ultimately I think EMC doesn't know what to do yet because with VMware, where do you put the data layer? Now, Pat Gelsinger said today in his keynote that the data layer is going to be decoupled from the app, and the apps were tied to the infrastructure, so you know, we're hearing that Pat Gelsinger is talking about gravity of, of data. So I think what's going to happen is you're going to see a data layer emerge, and VMware will be a big part of that conversation. So Stu, what are you seeing on the show? I mean, you've been walking around, talking to people, you got the convergence angle covered. Yeah. What, what are you hearing? So, so uh, interest, we talked about EMC and its acquisitions and trying to kind of pull them all together. So one of the things we saw a few years ago is the show had almost fragmented into pieces. You have had the people that kind of love data domain, you have the documentum track, you've got the, the labs people, and people are breaking out of their silos and cross-training. Talked to a bunch of people that are doing infrastructure for today and tomorrow, and then going to see the data science stuff uh, on Wednesday. So, uh, really, uh, kind of a mixing of roles and responsibilities, and understanding a lot of the different pieces here. Uh, you know, the thing we've talked about a lot, Dave, is uh, really the transformation of the workforce. And, and you just can't be, you know, a storage guy. You know, worrying about your lunch. You need to kind of get out of that silo, uh, work with your peers, and EMC were kind of raising themselves to a higher level of discussion with the C. Suite and to make themselves more strategic. Stu, the Stu how about um, how about the relationship with Cisco? We, we had we had Mike Clayco on today, yeah. Brocade. We saw the V Specs announcement. Uh, I mean, EMC and Cisco obviously have a very close relationship, but is it? Is it, is it cooling off a little well, bit? So, so, so interesting point, if you look, networking's growing here, Juniper and Arista are both here uh, with, with good presence at EMC World, which is a first. So absolutely, it's always been Brocade and Cisco and starting to see the other networking guys. So we know that these big players have to be able to support multiple environments. I think the, the Cisco EMC relationship is still strong. VCE's here. Cisco was very, uh, you know, a key part on the V Specs launch. Uh, Brocade was too, but you know, Cisco has a strong presence there. So, you know, first place you walk into the uh, partner pavilion, Cisco's right there. VCE's right behind it. Giant V Specs bus with, you know, Cisco is one of the main logos. So, uh, I don't think it's cooling off, but. EMC, if they want to stay strategic, needs to keep their options. What do you think about VMAX? We heard from Secret CTO that good props on VMAX. What are you hearing on that? What's your analysis so, there? So, uh, you know, Symmetrics, you know, which is turned into the VMAX, is, has been, you know, the, you know, flagship product of EMC for, you know, gosh, the last, you know, since, since 1990. So it, it is still a major part of the portfolio. Uh, general feedback we hear from the community is still solid on VMAX. Uh, latest uh, research that the Wikibon group has done uh, still shows its, its market leadership and its space, uh, and, and it's still doing well. Uh, the the high-end storage isn't as sexy anymore, and it's not getting talked about, but you know, EMC is still plugging Yeah, away. that's interesting, John. I mean, the Symmetrics, VMAX, I mean, <clears throat> it's hardened microcode, been around for a long time, um, very, very stable, people run their businesses on it. However, you know, that type of ingrained architecture, that hardened architecture is always hard to change. Somehow, the, the, the VMAX people, the VMAX engineers have been able, the software guys have been able to keep pace with that, which is amazing to me because you juxtapose VMAX to say 3PAR. Right. Now, 3PAR is putting forth the notion in their messaging that, hey, we're, we're the new tier one multi-tenancy, uh, fully virtualized architecture, much more flexible. Uh, we can support applications across the portfolio, more cloud-like, that's the new tier one definition. EMC on the other hand is saying no, tier one is the you know, traditional high-end, mainframe class, reliability, availability, serviceability. So there's an interesting little war going on between the, the, the Donatelli acquisition of 3PAR, HP, really, going after that high-end base, and EMC doing a great job of holding on to its existing base. Um, I'm interested to see how that thing, thing shakes out. I don't know if you have an opinion on yeah, it. Yeah, so, so Dave, absolutely. When I, I look at it, it, it's very tough to kind of go head on in, in that space. So, so tier one vendor, uh, you know, EMC's been there with IBM and Hitachi for a long time. 
three parts got a great product and, and they're trying to fight EMC in that space. But if you look at the, the biggest disruptor for you know large block environment, it's flash technologies and scale out file architectures. So EMC, of course, with, with the VF cache and extreme IO acquisitions are trying to go in that space. And Isilon seems to be growing pretty well too. So those are, uh, I, I think, the bigger risk for eroding the Symmetrics market, uh, the VMAX market. John, I wonder if you could give us your perspective. Now you're, you're leaving tonight, you're going to the HBase con conference, uh, which is you know, the heart of big data. Now you got a big data, data science summit going on here. What do you think about all this? About what EMC's position? Yeah, in specifically their positioning data in big data. Um, data well, I mean, first of all, I just want to say to the to the audience out there that you know SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv and Wikibon, we'll go wherever the stories are. So you know, we're here at EMC World for three days, wall to wall. But you know, if there's a story to be had, we will go to the story, and that's why I'm going to San Francisco tomorrow to go to the HBase conference because that's where the action is right now in the data science developer community. And so I think, obviously, I'm pretty bullish on big data, as you know. But EMC's perspective on big data is a little bit different. It's really much more of a business discussion. Um, they talk speeds and fees with Green Fund a little bit here. They bought Pivotal Labs. So they're putting their toe in the water relative to quote what I call real technical chops when it comes to big data. And so I think they've done a great job with the messaging and they know they're doing work there. So they got, they're investing in that. So you know, I, give, I give EMC a nice little golf clap there and say, hey, good job. Um, relative to the Data Science Summit, I think the positioning is clear, that they are definitely not going after the developers right now. They are clearly going after the business audience, Dave, where you know, they want to educate them, kind of a thought leadership summit. It's kind of a TED videos kind of provocative content. Yeah, they might talk speeds and feeds here and there, but for the most part, it's, it's mostly high level, you know, what is data science, kind of data science 101. Um, so I think for EMC, my critique on EMC right now is they are really, really not there with real messaging and real deliverables to attract hardcore developers in big data. And that is the alpha developers. You know, with Pivotal, it's a good start, and I think that's a great direction. It's not that they're missing it, they just don't have anything right now to talk about that. So, so, so John, just, just a question for you on that, because I think we saw EMC at Node.js, uh, the, the Node Summit, uh, I see a lot of puppet people uh, here, and you know, there, there is a pretty good data science crowd, people uh, in, in partnerships, so, I, I just kind of want your opinion on that. Is oh yeah, I mean, I mean, EMC is a huge install base of your startup. Why wouldn't you want to, you know, water ski behind EMC's ecosystem? But EMC is a company relative to delivering real value around the technical side on the developer. Just not there. It's the reverse. So yeah, you're right. The Puppet and those guys are coming here because there's real challenges in configuration management and automation relative to this, you know, legacy platform. And it's kind of kludgy right now. I mean, Green Plum's evolving, but you know, I'm not dissing EMC. I'm just saying this is what it is. The reality is, is that EMC is not viewed as a leader in the developer community around uh, big data. On the business side, they've got all the right things in place from a solution standpoint. Um, they got the executives focused on it, but you got a, uh, a conference like HBase conference going on. That's a significant ecosystem. It's their open source. EMC was late to the party in that. We, we covered it last year at EMC. We, we asked Pat Gelsinger. We played nicely in the, in the community. They are. so. I don't think it's just, I think it's just a timing issue for EMC. I'm just saying for this show, you know, compare and contrast, you've got Data Science Summit. I mean, it's a marketing vehicle. It's, it's not, I don't think there's any real there there uh, from a developer perspective. So, uh, you know, we heard the same critique about Strata. Uh, much more suits and Hadoop World this year with Hortonworks is going to be much more developer focused. So the, the market's growing, there's constituents all around and um, that's just what it is. Okay, thanks. Hey, so um, EMC made an acquisition today of uh, Synchplicity. Okay, I don't know if you know much about the company, uh, but they are a file management uh, 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 system for the cloud, and um, it allows you to sort of sync and share automatically. It's like an iCloud, you know, sort of sort of product. I don't know what they paid, uh, <clears throat> but the news just broke about an hour ago, so trying to get some more information. Is it, on that. Is it a uh, official release by EMC? EMC acquires uh, Synchplicity. Yep. Uh, privately held next generation cloud-based sync and share file management provider. So I guess box-like. Sync Park. Look, who's the start? Enterprise capabilities on like consumer-focused competitors. So it's enterprise capabilities. Uh, EMC further enables the enterprise to balance productivity for the users. Blah blah blah. So EMC up three and a, three and a quarter percentage today announced. Has acquired privately held Synchplicity, a leader in cloud-based file management solutions. 
based in Menlo Park. Yeah, it looks like a security compliance product. That's nice, that fits right into data protection as we talked about earlier today. So th this is really a Dropbox type of competitor as well, but it's Dropbox for the enterprise. I mean, here's the thing, what's going on. This, this might, I mean, I haven't read it yet, but it's just quickly browsing the release. There's a big trend, obviously, bring your phone to work kind of thing, uh, bring your own phone uh, concept, uh, and that's really pushing the envelope on the edge. So when you talk about the edge, Stu, you got security, so obviously network policy, stuff that's been around the industry, it's always been great on, on a firewall-based system, here's your BlackBerry controlled phone, here's your apps that are running up, but now with cloud, the consumerization of IT, there are issues around compliance, security, and that's a big trend. What, yeah, what's so, your angle so, so, on that? So interesting thing I took away from the keynote today is I didn't hear a lot about VMware which is surprising because you know we've been coming to the show for many years and VMware's been front and center for the last few years. The acquisition sounds a lot like Project Octopus that VMware's. Uh, well, I'm interested in where it fits. On, so. um, uh, they've got 35,000 users, so you know, I mean, smaller than Dropbox. Is Maritz right, scheduled to show up here? It, Maritz is giving a keynote tomorrow morning and we've got a bunch of VMware people that'll be on theCUBE Tuesday and Wednesday. I mean, I, I think you make a good point, Stu. I think it's a, a muted VMware message there. I don't, well, I didn't so, hear much. I mean, the, the big challenge, you know, I've seen with VMware is the shift from kind of the infrastructure to the cloud because those really are two separate product lines from VMware and, and the solution sets and the people that are deploying them are, are yeah. different. So. I think so, what, what I want to see VMware tell me and I want to hear this from them and I haven't figured it out yet, but I want to see where they put the data layer. So relative to their stack, where does the data layer fit? And is there one data layer or are there maybe multiple data layers? So, so uh, John MacArthur's texting me, giving me some good information here. He's the one who shared with me 35,000 users. Um, they've got a native iPhone app, uh, which essentially backs up Google Docs. So that's a f sort of interesting, you interesting angle. Right, I guess so, I thought <laughs> Google backed up my Google Docs, but you know, maybe not well enough, right? Google's a little flaky sometimes. Re recover from tape. Know. Yeah, recover, right, Google recover, recovered from tape. Uh, I wonder what the secret CTO would say to that. Oh no, wait, <laughs> so not, not, not back up, sorry. So back up, uh, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's an alternative to, to Google Docs, I'm not really sure. Yeah, because you're, you're synchronizing, okay. sharing files, so it's collaboration and very so, Dropbox-like. So Stu, what are you hearing? You've been out scouring the landscape today, out here at EMC World, um, attending the keynotes. Uh, um, you know, what, what are you hearing what, on the floor? Big, first of all, it's a big crowd. I heard 13 to 15,000 people. It's noticeably larger than last year. We've seen a number of the shows uh, this year cutting back a little bit. So good crowd. Uh, people are you know, really excited to put hands on. Uh, Jeremy Burton has put a lot of bling. Uh, you know, th th there's definitely a lot of flash to EMC, who traditionally was kind of the East Coast, uh, more engineering-driven company. Now EMC has a lot more of a West Coast vibe. Yeah, we love uh, that about Jeremy. Absolutely. So yeah, you know, yeah. it, it, I want to come back to that. So, so it's actually, I'm reading this yeah. press release. So Rick Devenuti is the guy who's quoted in the press release. So this is an IIG move. Okay. okay so you basically you've got SharePoint, right, which essentially is you know, part of that whole workflow capability. So that's really where it's going to sit. So this is designed to really try to bring IIG, I guess, to the cloud, give them a little bit more sizzle, right? The old documented piece. That division's never really performed the way that EMC has wanted it to perform. So maybe they're seeing an opportunity to uh, you know, become more box-like for the enterprise. Dave, what's your take on today? I'm curious to get your angle on today. Well, I thought, again, John, you know, we've seen the evolution of messaging at EMC. I mean, I have to say, Jeremy Burton, the props go out. I mean, we had him on theCUBE, the very first EMC world. He was very new, and he said, I'm big on messaging. Well, boy, is he ever. And I think the messaging continues to be very strong. The transformation of IT and business and yourself, uh, transformation of, of, of IT being cloud, uh, business being big data and self being you know these other capabilities that EMC services training is bringing in. So that's good. I like that messaging. You know, I've just just to, just to add to that, what I've noticed a little nuance with Jeremy Burton's messaging is, is that like he did, we did on the first three years ago, he did say that. But look at what, how it's evolved. Cloud meets big data. The little nuances. Now it's cloud meets big data, but he's separating cloud to the IT and big data to be business transformation. So it's transformation message, but he's segmented out categorically both. So it was a nice extension to the messaging. And um, I think, nice nuance there for Jeremy. I think the other thing I would I would point out again, I, we, we keep seeing the both transformation and the evolution of, of EMC. And what strikes me is the, the the strength of the partnership between EMC and SAP, much stronger than it was a year ago. You saw that come through. Joe Tucci actually mentioned that on my Joe Tucci mentioned that on your social cam. As well, we know about this project inside of EMC called Propel. It's a very large SAP instance. You know, I, I think what's happening, the EMC has not come out and said this, but I think that, you know, the EMC's a big Oracle shop. And you got to believe that, like every Oracle customer, they, 
basically had it with Oracle's tactics. And so reducing their reliance on Oracle, increasing their commitment to SAP, putting their money where their mouth is, that kind of deal happens at the top levels. When you mentioned Bill McDermott, you could see on your social cam, which yeah. would be, people should watch. Tucci just lit Tucci up. lit up. Oh, oh we, know, we know McDermott. They're a good oh, partner. A good partner, very good partner of ours. So, I mean, I think that that to me is the, the big new partnership. I mean, obviously EMC and Cisco, but I mean, it's lost a little bit of its shine. You got you know, some alternatives coming out. We sort of seen that yeah, take I mean, shape, and now SAP is the new big partner. Take Joe Tucci, for example, right? Joe Tucci, uh, competitive guy, baseball player, uh, as we know. Uh, that time he threw the ball and, uh, into, the, into the screen. Um, but Bill McDermott, competitor, right? So Bill McDermott, when we had our one-on-one -on -one with him last week, I like to win. He's a competitive guy, he likes to play hoops, <laughs> Joe Tucci. I could see them getting along, Dave, and I think that's an interesting observation, and I'd be curious to follow that. And I've been noticing configuration-wise, I'm bumping into a lot more people at EMC that work at SAP in a way that you'd, you'd almost realize, are, they, are you an employee of SAP? So it's very VCE-like. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> Now, is, I there, is there something there? VCE, obviously, Hong Quek has been on about VCE. SMP. Having Capellas on tomorrow. Capellas. Hey, I just got another text from uh, MacArthur. Said True Ventures put in, uh, and some private investors put in 2.35 million last October. No, no, sorry, in October 2008. Never, never seen any mention of a B round. So that's a couple years ago. Uh, but they did raise more money. But, but it's True Ventures, how much. John Callahan's company. Yeah, so, so that was a that was probably a, a, an exit. You know, north of 100 million. I don't Why don't know. I text them right now? Yeah, see what see what you can find out there. So, so that's you know the flash thing starting to come together. I mean, we I said this in the cube today with with Mark Sorensen and Barry Ader, um, who it was a good segment. Uh, that that essentially, people say, well, EMC's behind. Pat Gelsinger said they're behind. Now, they, but but they're behind. They were behind guys like Fusion IO, who's sort of leading the space. Violent Memories, you know, Solid Fire, even though they haven't announced the product, has great vision. EMC is ahead of the other whales in Flash. So in a way, they're not behind. Because if you're huge and ahead of your biggest competition, then you're ahead. And I think they're actually significantly ahead. Now we'll see what happens. Um, it's a leap game of leapfrog. We'll see what happens with IBM. We'll see what happens with HP. Syncplicity, yes. Yeah, syncplicity. So we'll see that game of leapfrog. But I mean, EMC's, you know, seriously, they got a, they got a, a Skunk Works that they turned into a business division. They just made an, uh, an acquisition of Extreme IO. I would expect, Stu, you're going to start to see some other acquisitions. Just like when IBM bought Natiza, EMC got, bought Greenplum, you had a run on those data and, warehousing guys. And the guys. scale out uh, architectures like Isilon yeah. and Ibrix. And, yep, they all uh, went. And, and I would so think absolutely. that you're going to start to see some flash moves. I think HP's got to make a move there. I think this is a great IBM. move for John, uh, for John Callahan's firm, True Ventures, because True Ventures just had a great exit with uh, Cetus with the VMware, um, which they, the VCs were not happy about letting go. Those V, those they it sold it for much lower than what they could have got if they stayed alone, from what I heard from multiple sources. But the entrepreneurs really wanted to join VMware, Stu. I mean, I talked to them like at the big data party at, at Ravi's house, and they're like, "We love VMware. They love Maritz. They love that culture." So. Um, a lot of cool deals going on, a lot of M&A action. Uh, we have uh, calls into our sources to try to find out how much that went for. But again, all the action is happening in tech. And Dave, like I said on the EMC TV show, IT is back. IT is exciting. The consumer market, Facebook, Twitter, it's getting played out. Consumerization of IT is where the action is. The VCs are investing, ton of M&A opportunity. And Stu, that's why I think the developers are gravitating towards EMC because EMC is a whale that's creating a massive thermal of opportunity around it. So, you know, startups go where the money is, and EMC is blazing a trail, Dave, right to where the dollars are, and that's the big accounts. And, and John, you've, you've been covering the EMC Ventures, which is a kind of an interesting uh, arm of EMC, throwing some money around. And oh yeah, some interesting and Pat things. Gelsinger recently um, um, been more actively involved in that by a new, new manager in place, ex-Intel uh, capital guy running it. Um, so. Pat Gelsinger, Intel Capital Executive, running VMC Ventures, ecosystem development. We talked about this two years ago at VMworld. It's an ecosystem. Wintel yeah. is the old model. VMware EMC is the new model. So, uh, and in BCE and SAP. You, got, you can't help but be impressed with EMC. I mean, not only the messaging, they're great marketing. People love to criticize the products. You know, but we have secret CTO who generally was, he was wanted I think, to grill them. He was critical, saying, what do you say? I got I to hand it to VMAX. Now, this is, a product, 
This is a, a he wasn't just grinding. This is a product gets called it gets called legacy. It gets called all these pejoratives. But here's the secret CTO. He's you know nobody knows who he is, and he like you said he wants to grind him. And he says, well, I gotta say that Vmax is pretty good. So you know I say I get criticized a lot, but I mean you look at EMC, great marketing, great messaging, fantastic execution, they throw off cash, the company's they make solid. great acquisitions. The company's solid, Joe Tucci said on my social cam, uh, a lot to do, it's fun, he wants to stay around. It's an exciting time for EMC, yeah, they mean, really transformed themselves from a storage vendor to an absolute player, uh, and, and also a leader, I mean, they're also leading. So you got BRS, uh, the data domain acquisition, the data protection, 66% market share. All their, 100% of their products hit 100% of their customers as we heard from the secret CTO. So EMC, great field sales force, great consulting organization under Howard Elias, Tony Colas' organization, we'll hear from him tomorrow. EMC's pumping on all cylinders, well, it's been fantastic. Yeah, and I, just like I said earlier, I think services is like the secret weapon that uh, the EMC never talks about that much. I mean, they talk about their services, but they don't, you know, you don't hear Tucci standing up saying we got the best service in this because he doesn't want to tick off his services partners. They really play that partnership game very well. The way they, Played Cisco, and I say played Cisco, but played nice with Cisco, VC, they got that whole coalition going. Cisco went off and did you know, FlexPod with NetApp, but there's a nice balancing act that they got Brocade in. Really, really savvy, now SAP, about how they manage their partnerships. Oracle, you know it's this, but what do they do? They pay the million bucks, they get on stage at Oracle Open World in front of 15, 20,000 Oracle customers to get their messaging across. You know, it's well worth it. That's a million yeah. dollar messaging, and you know, that well it works. It. So EMC's doing great. We are here, theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's coverage, uh, this, all the signal here, extracting and sharing that with you. This is day one, coming to a close. Um, SiliconAngle.tv, we have EMC day two tomorrow, wall to wall. Dave and Stu will be covering it with Jeff Kelly and the team. Um, Mark Risen Hopkins, Kean will be here with Alex uh, Wilcox, is our new, new guy here. Thanks guys for this. Great day, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And I will be in San Francisco for the HBase conference, so look for that on Silicon Angle Channel 2. So um, we now have the two channels, look for that. Silicon Angle 1 will be MC World, Channel 2 will be HBase conference, and again, we will go to wherever the stories are. This action, we will bring it to you. This is Silicon Angle, day one wrap up. Good night, and see you tomorrow. <laughs>